to feel the back of the net. Medise with the easiest of tap-ins. And Pirates have uh, made it 1-1. And see Jacola Webb on the far post. Pelo Kibuan, it's swinger to the near post. The general, Tico Medise, opens up the score. Nancy Navigator, Kalagata. There he is, the navigator, 23 games he played in all competitions this season, went to the final of the uh, MTN 8. And really, if you compare what happened at the end of his time at Mamilodi Sundowns, where Deco played in starting lineup just three times, compared to this season under Benny McCarthy, where he played 13 games in the starting lineup. Uh, a huge difference. A man is rejuvenated and he's here on Sport at 10. Deco, how are you? I'm good in you, bro. Good, good, good. Good, man. But you really should be feeling very, very different and very good because your last season at Sundowns, yeah. three starts. Yeah. You know, um, that must have been tough. No, it was. I mean, being from a regular at Sundowns to, to, to end up playing three games, I mm. mean, of, of course, it's tough. And for me as a player that has passion for the game, I also wanted to play. So, and I knew that... Uh, the chances are very slim and the guys that are playing in the same position as me, they were doing good. So I just wanted a new change. Then you go to Cape Town. Yeah. Benny. Yeah. What does he say to you? How does he give you that that motivation, that 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 thing that gets you back so that you play in yeah. the starting lineup as regularly as you did? I think I think what what what, what made it uh, between me and Benny to, to work was because Benny's new and he wants to succeed. Mm. And I want to succeed as well. It was my new environment that I wanted to play. So the, the first thing that Benny told me, whenever you're feeling good to play, I'll play you, mm. irrespective. And you just tell me when you're feeling good to play and then I'll play you. And then for your coach to tell you that, obviously it makes me want to play. And every time he started me to play and then I played well. And just, you hit the ground running. Because yeah. if memory serves me, your very first game, right, in the league, yeah. you scored. I scored, yeah. First, first, first game in the league. The first game they gave you, I think it was the second game for the, for the team. You missed the first game. Yeah. Come in and score. Yeah, I came in and scored and it was a great feeling, but it just that yeah, the season didn't go well for me because of the injuries that I had. Mm. I, I thought I could have played more games, but it just that with the injuries, it's, it's been sad, but I mean, hopefully next Is it different maybe. injuries or was it one thing that was just uh, kept not trying to get well? It was, it, most of the time it was just one thing mm. that didn't get well and it took time and sometimes you get, to, you find, you get to a point where we realize actually what we could have done earlier to, to to make the prog the progress there, man. But if you mind you, you find out with you, we're doing the same thing, the same thing over and over again, end up not getting well. So I think that's, that's, that's one problem that we faced. So at the end of the season, how would, you def how would you look back at this season at Cape Town City, not only just for you, but as a football club? How do you think you did this year? I think this year, this year was one of those seasons where we learned a lot. Um, um, the, the mistakes that we did, I think at some point we could have been position one or two on the lock mm. and we, we lost games that we were supposed to win and with, with the so-called small teams and mm. then I, I know that whenever we played big teams always showed up I think the consistency in our team wasn't there and uh, those are the things that we learned as well so I mean we, we, we tend to change things coming new season we, we, we're trying to do new things and then hopefully to win the first cup that we're gonna face which is the, the top eight. Really? Yeah. You reached the final? Of course. This year you were in the MTN 8 final? Yeah. Disappointing though the way it went. No, nah, it was. I mean, with with the, with uh, considering a goal that many that we considered after leading for so long, uh. um, it was very very disappointing. And then to come and lose with penalties, you know, it was very because we knew that uh, we stand a good chance to beat Supersport. But if you look at it again, Supersport won uh, the top eight of, in the position that it finished in. It was very 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 scary. Uh. But it just it shows well, how the season was and how tricky the season was. It, it could have been us that position because at some point we hit it a dip and then we didn't get points but also other teams as well didn't get points so there was a thought at some point where guys we could end up in a relegation struggle here yeah, yeah. i mean if 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 when we were when we in that struggle and uh, if other teams won we could have been easy so, uh, if you realize we won one game when position three we mm. lose one game position six or mm. seven so it was just that's how the league was it that, that's how tricky it was i mean um just I mean, it's, it's, it was a different league altogether. There's a first league, actually, that I played in that was very, very tricky. Dekomodice's book, called The Curse, is doing fantastically well right now. It is right about just there, short of being the number one book right now in exclusive books is where you can buy it. And that means there must be good things in that book, Deco, because it is selling like hotcakes. You must be proud of it. Yeah, I'm very proud. I mean, I'm telling my story the way it is, and um, I was just hoping that people will read it and enjoy it. Uh. and learn different things that I went through. What made you decide, I'm going to write a book? I mean, because of I went through so much. And um, I think I never had an opportunity to tell my story. And um, yeah, I mean, what was the best way, the best way to do it was to write a book. So, 
what I want to do now is I want to throw some of the stuff that I know is in the book, and then you're <laughs> going to tell me just a little bit about that particular thing. For instance, oh. The Curse, the book that you've written, talks about you drinking excessively, yeah. like alcohol. Mm. Why? I, I'm, I'm even surprised that that even happened in your life. I think maybe the reason why I actually started drinking, maybe it was because of depression that I had. Because um, I was... Depression? Yeah, because I was in a stage where I thought when I joined the team that there's a team, there's a team that gives you an opportunity to go overseas. Because mm. it has happened with the players that played before me. So once I got those opportunities, I felt like those opportunities were denied. Mm. So, and there was not nobody to talk to. And uh, I felt like um, I've been made a scapegoat because of the only thing that I'm asking for is to get this opportunity to do, to actually further my career. And in the book, you'll talk about that. But how badly were you drinking? It was not too bad, but it was just that it was an everyday thing because I wasn't training anymore. Because you find at some stage I'll be told to come to training, and when I get to training, the coach doesn't know that I'm supposed to be at training. The mm. coach will send me back to the office. I mm. get to the office, nobody's there. I go back to training. The training will say, I'll go, go back home until we'll call you to come to training. Mm. So it was those kind of things. So you never know whether you're going to go to training or not. And at that time, in the media, it was like I, will, I went AWOL. But I was knowing for a fact that I'm not, I'm not allowed to come to training. The book is called The Curse. Yeah. And I know that in the book, you also talk about going to Inyanga, like from Congo or something. <laughs> <laughs> the two things, the book's name and going to Inyanga, there's a connection, right? Yeah, there's, there's a connection. I mean, the first, the first thing is that for me to actually call the book The Curse was because when, we, when me and Nick were actually in the process of writing a book, the word curse was coming out a lot. Uh. So it made sense for us to call the book bad. In terms of Inyang, it's not only him. I met so many people that wanted to help me out. So he's, the, he's one of the guys Bucks that... Was, I, 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 I was curious as well. I wanted to know. Because this guy was actually paying people to, to bring me in his house. Uh. He, like, he offered people... I don't know how much money. To sort out your curse. He offered people 20 grand to just bring me in his house. Then he will, he will take care of the rest. What was the curse? What was the thing they needed to fix? I think maybe it was that, because everybody thought that I had a curse. And then I think the first thing that he said to me was like, I want to help you to start winning things. And at the time, I've already won the league at Sundown. Now we are here. Now we are here. I'm a curious person. But I didn't know that it was, it was Inyang at the first. Maria was just, Ayan, yeah, no, like... I just said the King of Congo wants to see you. <laughs> I've, I've met people that said they want to meet me. Uh. Yeah, so um, um, his, they were like, the guy really, really likes you and wants to meet you. And uh, this, uh, the person that actually told me this is a very, very important person. I'm not going to name his name, but he's a very, very important person, so I took it seriously. So, the, and in the book, you're going to give us a little bit more than you even telling me here, right? Uh, yeah, the, the story course, is there. No, no, in the book, everything is there. And uh, yeah? Just, yeah, I want people to go and buy it. Actually, these are exclusive books. And then... Oh, now he brings the book out. Okay, it's, okay. It's, okay. <laughs> but, but before I get there, because there's also yeah. a line in the book where you say, never be in a, alone in a room with the Iron Duke when he's angry. Yeah. How did you get to experience that? Because I know in the book there's a whole part about that. How did you get to experience the Iron Duke angry and be alone in a room with him? It's because, um, it's because when I first came to the team, I've never seen him angry. Mm. And I was one of his favorite players. You know, in big games will call me in and tell me how I'm putting the game is. I need to drive the guys because I was carrying the team at the time. So when, when, when me and the team started having differences, I saw him angry and uh, trust me, because he's a, he's a very important figure in, the, in football. And um, also he's a father and he's, he's got passion for his team as well. So, and uh, he knew, and I also knew that he's actually helped me to become where I was. So I didn't want to piss him off, but yet I wanted to be given opportunity. So it was a thin line actually how to speak to him. So you're sitting there yeah. and you can see the anger is rising. Yeah. How does that feel at that moment? I felt, I felt like I was doing a wrong decision. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like going overseas or trying to go overseas was a wrong decision. But, but I think maybe the understanding from my side as well, it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't as well. Because I think maybe if the conversation was much better, I could have understood the reason why I wasn't. But it's just that probably maybe I wasn't told properly or maybe I didn't want to understand. Because I felt like if I can go overseas and get a team before World Cup comes through, I don't have pressure to perform on the World Cup. So mm. I'll actually have a good tournament. Wow. I wouldn't want to do that. I mean... I wouldn't want to be in that room because <laughs> I think in the Aiban line, like, yeah. where do you go? What happens next? Yeah, yeah. But I need that book, right? Because yeah. all the things I was touching based on is things that I've heard, people telling me, yeah. you know, this is what's in the book. It's going to be good. Make sure you get... Can I have the book? 
Yes, sir. Can I? Can I really? Yeah, you can. No, but then I can actually sign no, for no, you. No, no, no. I even brought a special pen. Yeah, one nine, like a special, not just a pen, <laughs> silver pen. I'm getting it signed, and then I will be in it because I have to hear about all of the things from marriage, drinking, nyanga. Uh, alone in the uh, space with the Iron Duke. And also, Deco, as you sign it, apparently mm -hmm. you and Pizzo didn't speak, right? Like, for years. <laughs> Towards the end of your time there? Yeah. There was no conversations really happening? There was, there was none. I'll tell you why, in fact. I think the reason is... Uh... Mm, letter, 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 <laughs> letter. You know, while you tell me. Thank no. you, let me see, yeah. With, with, with me, Pizzo, it goes a long, long way. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad. But it just that when he, when he, when he came to... to <laughs> it's on the other side, comrade. No, but it's here. I get to <laughs> It's there. I've got it signed. Signed copy. You can't have it. But you and Pizzo, uh, in the last couple of years of your time at Mami Rodi Sundowns, it was just cordial but no conversation. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I felt bad because this is a person that actually... I started being coached properly by Pizzo. And he's, he's the only person actually that actually introduced me to the PSL. Mm. But then I think... At some point, things started being bad without communication. And Kulmisani? Yeah, that's not Kulmisani at all. Like, I felt at some point, I'll, even the my players are they even asked me, why are you guys aren't speaking? Go and is. Marugo training every day. We wave and then. Nah, it was the issue because of now, yet sometimes you've got three coaches, my captains, and my senior players. So, whatever the information needed to be passed to me, it'll, it'll go through my channels. Mm. Maybe an assistant coach will come and tell me, maybe my instructions to go into the game. E beef. Will you tell me in the book what the beef is, actually? <laughs> because I can't just I think, not talk. I think, I think, like, for me, it was just me explaining that issue. I don't think I know the issue in depth. Or maybe now Peter, he was doing it without even realizing that he was. Mm. So I don't know where the beef comes from, where it started, or when it started. So it just but how happened. did you feel when it was happening? I felt bad. Because, I mean, there's a person, when he was in the national team, I was at Sundowns, he was asking me, he was asking me about the team. Mm. And when he came to the team, I knew that he was coming. So I knew that he was going to save the team. I was happy that he's coming because I understood him better. And I was the guy that actually was helping other players to understand him because of he's a very emotional coach, mm. he's very passionate. I was the guy that actually was helping other players to understand. So coming back and be the person that you didn't speak to else on the background, I'm doing so much, so much for the team, even though I'm not playing, but I'm doing so much for the team because I've got love and passion for the team. It was, it was, it was kind of sad for me. So I was like, uh, if I'm not appreciated anymore within the team, uh, let me go somewhere else and play. Here it is. I've got my copy, The Curse. Where can I get it, Deco? You can get it at exclusive books uh, countrywide. And uh, I think we 400 copies less to be number one. Uh, it's a good feeling. And uh, yeah, now right now I'm doing tours. I think I'm going to Bloemfontein on Friday. Uh -huh. And I was at UG last week, and uh, I need to go. I'm going to, to Botswana again uh, probably next week, so I'm touring the country, so it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah. 400 books to go, and I think we're going to do a big job today in terms of getting some of these books off the shelves. You tell some great stories, and I'm going to get into the book tonight after the show, The Curse. Get it now before it is gone from all those shelves. And also, let's get Deco's book to number one. Come on. Thank you, Deco, for coming in and Thank sharing the stories much, with man. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.